Ladies and gentlemen, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On with the show. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we get going on our regular program here, um, I just went down to Harbor Freight and I picked up an 18-pound vibrating uh, tumbler to deburr my bottle openers, which was suggested by you. And, uh, of course, they had the 5-pounders, and this happens to be 18-pounders. And I went ahead and I got my free tape measure while I was down there. I haven't been to Harbor Freight in about five years. I try to stay away from there. But I couldn't pass the deal for just trying out something your suggestion. All right, uh, I, I did, I got a little chuckle. Is that, don't let the cord uh, overhang the table. Um, even though this part here is not supposed to vibrate, this part is. And so I got it hanging from uh, aluminum TIG wire here and then plug it in. And it says don't plug it in until you're all ready to go. Close lid and all of that good stuff. Um, and uh, then here, uh, uh, they give you all your materials and stuff like that to use. I picked up um, their five pound container of t tumbler uh, ceramic triangles, the big stuff for what they have. It's really a medium uh, grade uh, material. And this is my first time here, so you know I'm 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 learning as I go. This is not I'm not no expert at this at all. Um, I just grab what they got because I want to start somewhere and I want to try something. Okay, and I'm not doing a review on Chicago uh, Electric's uh, vibrator uh, bowl here. Um, I'm just sharing that I am going to be doing that to these, and we're going to test them out. Uh, uh, I, the grit and material all right so that the first episode right here i'm not going to exceed what they tell you it's actually in here in the warning do not exceed the capacity so 18 pounds is the capacity i put three of these in here so that only that that really only leaves me three pounds of m material and it kind of let me know that i could have sacrificed it five pounds of the media and, and added five pounds more uh, product okay so what we have is uh, the my uh, pound and a half of the American flag actually that was a little bit more okay we'll take that one away pound and a half of uh, Patriot uh, attitude and pound and a half of lobsters all right and this one lobster here has got some really gnarly uh, edges to it this edge is dr dressed off which I I did even before I was sanding them on the table here I want to see how well this knocks off or knocks round all the edges on here all right I was also told that take and fill this thing up with uh, BB shots or something like that that might be better who knows all right so we're not exceeding the amount of weight or anything else and it doesn't really seem like there's much product going in here as per abrasive I, i'll run it maybe i'll find out that i can exceed that i don't know not exact line up here what do you expect right all right um we'll put that on there I'm not going to run juice or anything in there right now. I'm running it dry, but I got that on there just so powder don't go flying around. All right, we're going to let that run, and we're going to go handle another project somewhere, and we'll come back to this a little bit later. 
All right, on our way into the other room there, we're going to pull this block out because we're going to continue on our clapper. And the next step is to go ahead and lay it down on the mill table. And we're going to take some off of the bottom and some off of the top. Right here, right here. And then we're going to go ahead and create the valley in the center of it here. And we're going to hog that material off in the K&T. So let's head into there. Okay, yeah, we do have to clear off a project here. Um, we were sent in a lead screw for a knee, you know, underneath the uh, raise and lower the knee. And uh, it happened to got bent. And uh, so we were putting it on our rollers here to just verify where the bend was. <clears throat> Out here at the end here with the rollers riding somewhat in the straight section of lead screw that's in here. I'm getting almost 90 thousands out here. Now I, I checked into the groove here and we are running out here. So there is somewhat of a bend that's in here and here. But this will be another job and I'm not doing a video. It just happened to be here. So we, I thought I'd uh, at least give you an idea of, you know, the kind of work that does come in here. And this was sent in from uh, down south. Okay, we're going to run our universal head. And we pulled off our shaper clapper receiver. And that's what we're actually making that that one particular piece right there and making sure that these are cinched okay Okay, push in our rams and making sure that they're all the way in. There we go. Reverse our feed. Okay, now we're going to dial our head in vertically and uh, bring the vise over. Okay, let me get the vise set up. Okay, I'm going to take some of our sharpum here and I want to go ahead and create a layout on this top surface here. 
so we can get the the whole pattern that's going into it and then sweep the radius of that top it's gonna kind of give us an idea of this height here how much we're gonna go here and then we'll know about how much we're gonna do on the height all right I'll give that a second to dry okay we grabbed an old pair of chip pullers and uh, it's like five, so we'll go two and a half and five thousandths or so. Okay, create a little tiny scribe. Okay, it looks like it's good. All right. <clears throat> now we kind of just, we're going to go... Uh, Yeah, it's almost like one and nine sixteenths, something like that. All right, and uh, five and a quarter inches is going to be the secondary hole here. We'll put a little center punch in here. We'll set this up in a bridge port and exactly get this pattern right at the time. But all we need is a reference right now. Okay, so there's there's the center of our bolt circle. Or distance between the two holes. Okay, so this is a 5 8 uh, hole here and... This is a 5 8 bolt up here as well. Okay, so we got basically uh, 4 9 3 7 5 for the insides of that sweep. And we got uh, about 5 and 9 16 for the top. Okay, now we can see exactly how much material comes on over here. And I don't know what we had here. We got. Uh, Three quarters, pretty close to the distance there from the side. I kind of like that that thickness might be a little better there all right and from where that is um, we'll get the straight across square here this is kind of what I wanted want to you're gonna want to run like a wide flange nut up here on the top okay so when that nut comes over here and you're in that realm right there <coughs> you want clearance in this area right here so that's kind of what I'm looking at I would say something like that all right so that'll be the top where this comes on down we know that that's good in there that's gonna be your center there this here on on his is kind of squared off on the pitcher kind of a square face right here You know, this, the backup compound on my shaper has got a round shape to it. So we'll, we'll kind of contour the, the squareness. That'll do it. All right, I think we're pretty good ready to go into there because we can pretty well, we're going to die on the side here. We'll kind of mark, <clears throat> we'll make sure that our lines are going down so we can see that and... How far we're going to be carrying that down we might as well mark that on both sides so we can see it when it's in the vise 
and we're going to lay out that height there how far we're going to be turning that down okay let that dry for a second okay we've been running just just past an hour's time here and we want to see what the results is just running this dry a little bit of powder in here I can actually see the powder in my hose here some of the powder actually came through the hose so if it's not <laughs> if that pinch off is not doing it with the dry stuff there it, it shouldn't be doing it with the wet all right let's look at got some nice uh finish on on here it, it does look looks nice where i dressed off around this edge here that feels really really smooth it does not take off a little bit of the sharpness of the rough plasma cut the clean edge feels soft and rolled over slightly but the area where some of the melt over is just hanging those are still there and the flat surface leading up to it the stone is not getting against there because it's raised up on that surface right there the tips of those are a little bit rolled over but for a short period of time the flats and this pre-done surface is finished this is not so we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to put them in our holder and knock that off with the disc and then put them in here and we'll see how it's doing also i run this dry and i want to go ahead and see uh the results if i was to do it wet now this one here didn't have quite as much of overhang there and this looks Pretty satisfactory overall. Let's see if we can find one of the flags here. Now the flags are much uniform, but still if the dross or, or the hangover is there, it's not going to pick that up. But if it's free and clear, that feels good. Do I like that satiny finish versus my swirl? From the scotch bright kind of hard to tell let's see i'm going to go rinse one off with the uh the sink and uh, we'll take a look at that okay one more here and i think i think this will do it for our next test All right, that puts us at four pounds. We're gonna go a pound heavier. So we got quite a few in here. This now has got no dross on it. So we're just gonna be throwing them in here and we're gonna be looking to see how it does just for a short period of time, if it'll roll over that edge because it's all about the feel. If she feels good, you're gonna to wanna to play with her. But if, if it's rough, you're not going to want to. All right? So it's all about the feel. So once we break that edge, and if this does break the edge, it makes it a much more enjoyable grip. I'm going to try this dry again before I, I try a, a, a wet batch. Um, but we do want to see what the performance will be on that as well. All right. Here we go. We'll go for about a half an hour and check it out. Okay, we got our part in the vise nice and tight. We're overhanging so that we'll be able to come down, come across, and then we're going to be coming up and down the middle there. We're going to go right in the middle, and then we're going to step it side to side until we come out to what we're comfortable with as far as what we're going to want for our, our clapper 
uh, insert. All right, so this is basically how it looks right now. This is the radius we kind of drew out there, and uh, right there is the pivot pivot point right there. So we're gonna have this much more down at the bottom, and we're gonna have this much more at the top compared to my original one here. All right, and that kind of fits the template right here. All right, here we go. Yeah, it might be a little quick. All right, we'll give that a shot. Might be a bit much. Okay, we'll give it a shot right there. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna come over. That's about the width of the cutter. All right, we're gonna feed her in. Now I'm not gonna run coolant because this is ductile material and I want it to just stay on the top here. In fact, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a magnet and a rag well, we're going to have so much travel there. I'm just going to lay a rag down here. And I will put a magnet up here. And one over on this side here. And we'll keep that from coming down onto the ways there. That looks good. All right, let's jack in some more feed here. There's five eighths. Quarter. Pretty warm on the chip. Like digging a ditch. <laughs> And if you look there, we're gonna have we're gonna have enough travel right there. All right, that's excellent because we're gonna have enough travel back here to come all the way out. So we should be able to hog all of this off crosswise and lengthwise in one setup here. All right, I saw the heat coming out of that part right at the end there. Oh, and she is ch turning a little bit of uh, colored chips. When that edge got real, real thin, all right, and it comes out exactly right at the end. 
All right, and I'm just right up against the waves at that point. Awesome. Okay, we brought the lead screw in, in here just for the, the final touches here. We had a slight little bend in here and we were able to, within one punch of aluminum under here and one piece of aluminum here in hydraulic press, and we just happened to get it right uh, within a couple thousands. And this is running really, really true. Now, here's where our next or our biggest bend is, and that's <clears throat> that was where the, the least support from this part of the rod here and, and the bearing support here created a bend here. We, we turned it around and before we put the collet in there and we polished this up because we had some three jaw marks that uh, were put in there before we got it. I got a nice 7 8 collet in, or 15 16 collet in here and we got a good support right there. Now this will show you how much run out is actually down in here. Now we had 90 off of the other end and this is, uh, eh, that center hole is about a quarter inch there and we're going to have to somewhat pull it over to get it started in here when we get that heat generated. All right, so I like that location. We'll lock up our tailstock here and I got my striker and my torch. And uh, get some fire here. All we're doing is stress relieving this area right here to where we can bring this down, put the center in there, heat it up, let it run until it normalizes, and let it cool down slowly, and then it'll hold its shape and it'll be good to go. Just turn a little slower than this, it doesn't have to turn this fast. Or the 
Okay, over here on my slightly used flat spot. <laughs> uh, you get it? <laughs> uh, all right, so anyway, between that roller, that roller, and we are running within two thousands, maybe less than that, out there at the end. All right, she's still, I'm gonna hold my hand on, but she's warm. We're going to finish letting her cool down and we'll get it packaged up and ready to go. So we didn't really need to make a video on how we straighten that. Uh, but uh, there's, there's a little sample of it. We just came across on a cut here. We were in a little bit deeper and it was peeling out a piece. And then I brought it out just a little bit right there. And we're going to take another full width of the cutter again. And then just a partial. And then we're going to start making our down the center runs here. These were pretty close to our line there within about 20 thousands or so. Okay, this is another near full width cut. When it comes to hogging out material, it's pretty hard to beat these turbo end mills or roughing mills, whichever you want to call them. Now that it's in there a little ways, it starts just building it up and you can see, see a little bit of smoke. Of course, I got a little oil on this brush here, but she's pretty warm. She smokes a little bit. Look how fast it builds up that pile. There we go. We're, we're, we're punching through it now. fast it builds up that pile. Alright, we put the vacuum to it uh, just to hold out those chips and suck up that piece there when it flies off of there maybe. Yeah. Okay, because we uh, we had stepped that in and then came back out, uh, relieved the pressure just a little bit there, but that was that little tab that was sticking out. We're going to take about half of what we have left there, come across and kind of clean off this landing, and then we're going to go ahead and make our first pass down the center of the part. Here's our first pass right down through the middle. Okay, we're almost all the way through. We put the flat plate down on here so that it sucks, it sucks the uh, debris all the way clear of the channel and right up away from the cutter so it doesn't build up in there. Okay. 
Now we'll come back through. That's just the spring pressure from the pullover from going through. Okay, I got my hand crank here. Okay, and I'm just gonna stay off of that, that height right there just a bit. Alright, here we go. Through it again. Same thing again. Once we get the cutter past that face, I'll put the vacuum up against that face. And then it'll suck the chips clean. So they don't double cut the chips. Okay, let's go through the other direction. So we're gonna move the we're gonna move our part in, so we're gonna be cutting on my side of it. And yeah, we'll give it about three quarters of the depth there. And let's see how that does. Coupon, 88 cents a pound. Wow. I bought a bunch. They're, They're good. good. <laughs> I tried them first. And then I went back and got another bunch. You saw the commercial. The guy, the woman says to the guy, get a bunch of asparagus. So he goes up to the display and he's got stone in his basket. And she says, a bunch. <laughs> Not a bunch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude our video, but I want to remind you of a few things. The Barzi Summer Bash Smackdown event, we're raising up the cash prize, going along with what Stan uh, is going to be putting in there and a few other people, and Shars is sponsoring it with a gift certificate and a three or four jaw chuck, your choice, value of a thousand bucks. And there's going to be many more things added to this event. But on my webpage there, I have several ways that you can help me add money to this event. And one is um, the Clash of the Bash stickers. The Clash of the Bash t-shirts, which are on my storefront tier and on my webpage there, the Clash of the Bash uh, Smackdown event, uh, gives you the link to go over to the storefront tier. And I put in uh, a certain amount of money for the shirts, a certain amount of money for the stickers. And the number one item is the bottle opener. I put $5 in for every stainless steel and or brown steel uh, bottle opener. And uh, we're, you've seen this. We've been testing this out here. So I have the, the stone finish here. And then I can swap this around so you get it different perspective. 
And we're undecided what we're going to go with the finish, but we really have been enjoying the finish. We just did a batch of lobster tails here, and this is for another uh, uh, subject. And uh, the edge of the lobster is really, really smoothed out a lot by just a little massaging, then put it in with the stones. So it's working out pretty good. Besides the bash there, I want to remind you that I do have my new Glory stickers. Uh, they're in stock. We, we just ordered another thousand Patriot Attitude stickers. The Patriot Attitude is, is, came about in my steel cutout placard that I built for the wall. And I have several of them here because they're so popular. I, I, I've cut out a few so that I have them on hand so I can quickly, with, if I don't have the table open, I've got other work going on, I can go ahead and clean it off, prep it for paint, put the hanger on the back, and get it in a box and get it shipped to you. The Patriot Attitude stickers are going out, out of here like crazy and everybody wants one of these. And I have a lot of requests for this to be on a hat and I'm actually having the hats made right now. And here's the first sample of the embroidered stitchery that will be in on this image on the front of the hat. All right, besides this being on the front of the hat, I'm gonna have my personal emoji on one side. All right, so it's not really gonna be a Turn Right Machine Works hat. This is going to be a hat sharing my artwork, the Patriot Attitude. And they're going to be on Adam's caps, just like this, except for it's going to be a solid color. I'm going to put a link down below in the description so you can help me pick out colors that I'm going to offer this hat in. Uh, the probably three or four colors I'll probably have this in. They'll be black, and uh, they'll probably be uh, khaki, and a couple other ones. There's no camo in the Adam's um, I think it's LP 101 hat. I'll, it'll be down in the description, but it, it, you'll see the color choices that Adams has. Help me uh, make up my mind on uh, what I want to order, and I'm going to be doing that in the next week. All right, my regular new ball caps. Okay, this box was full. I'm down to a handful left. I still have black, and I still have <laughs> navy blue. All right, um, there's uh there's four of each still left from the last hundred, and those are coming in by the end of this week as well. The Patriot Attitude shirt is also on my storefront here. My black one's in the wash, but I wore this one out to dinner the other night, and I, I like this light, light blue. It really does offset the star field and the color of the image. And uh, I like shrinking down this image on the front a little bit. Um, it, it's a really, really nice shirt. I have these in three colors. If people put in more of an idea of other colors, I can go ahead and create another shirt just like this with three other color choices. There's limitations on going through storefront tier, but there's ways around that. You just got to speak up. You go, hey, I don't like your color choices. Uh, how about this or that? And then, um, you know, I get enough input in the same direction. I'll change it up. No worries. All right. I think I covered it. Oh, oh I didn't. <laughs> this is sitting right here. There's actually a couple things. Before I put the wood stove away, I do need to heat treat those holders that we had for the k and I don't want that to go another another season here. And I, I want to follow up with that, just like we are with the clapper. We're getting that underway. Um, so uh, that'll be coming up. Buffy is going back together. And here shortly, I have some de-rusting products that have been sent in to me. And I want to try them out. And I want to share those with you. And we're going to get that head cleaned up. And we're going to start getting that together. Because just two weeks ago, I just picked up a 7-inch riser. Okay, this is a riser and the bottom keeper that holds the head up seven inches higher off of the main column. My index head in there, from the base of the index head to the top where the jaws stick up from, that is seven inches. So this is going to almost eliminate any need 
to raise and lower that that knee to compensate for a drill chuck to an end mill type situation where you're always changing it back and forth and you always have to raise and lower that that knee to change out the quill and uh so i'm really looking forward to also i i'm tall i'm not i'm not uh um any i don't have any worries about having to reach up and control the head i've already checked it out um i may put an auto um draw bar on it who knows but i was able to grab a hold of one of these and um i'm looking forward to putting it in on buffy so until next time get her done Thank you.